guys. I think I left off with Haunted Hollywood. Step in the same bloody footprints of movie monsters and shudder at the thought that it wasn't all made up. Horror movie locations. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre gas station. The sign outside the store reads, we slaughter barbecue, which must come as a welcome relief considering what was killed here in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The backwoods service station where power tool wielding cannibals serve chili made from humans had hit hard times after the 1974 cult classic was released. Opening and closing under different names, now restored the newly named The Gas Station in Bastrop, Texas, 40 miles southeast of Austin, embraces its horror film past, sending memorabilia, selling memorabilia and autographed photos of Texas Chainsaw Massacre star Caroline Williams. The Exorcist, The Stairs. At the climax of William Friedkin's The Exorcist, Father Damien Karras crashes out of a window and tumbles down a steep flight of outdoor stairs to his death. To get the scene right, a stuntman had to fall down the stairs twice, his body protected by half-inch rubber on the steps. These stairs in jo the Georgetown section of Washington, D.C. are more likely to attract joggers than demon-possessed priests, but the significance of the location is not lost on the locals. The exorcist stairs are recognized as an official D.C. landmark and marked with a plaque. Friday the 13th, Camp Crystal Lake. The watchtower is still there. So are the archery range, the pond, and the counselor's cabin. But the only Jason running around are young boy guys working on their merit badges. Camp Crystal Lake from Friday the 13th is in fact a real life camp. Run by the Boy Scouts of America as Camp No Bean Bosco, the 300-acre camp in northwestern New Jersey has been welcoming scouts since 1927. Although the movie's cast came to dreadful ends, the scariest thing about the real camp is the warning on the website. Please note that the camp is not is private property and is not open to the public for visiting or tours. This policy does occasionally react, relax, with the establishment offering a public tour scheduled naturally on Friday the 13th. Michael Myers House. In 1978, this ominous looking house is where Mike Myers does not react well to seeing his sister getting hot and heavy with her boyfriend in the beginning of John Carpenter's cult favorite, Halloween. An abandoned home in South Pasadena, California during filming, the house has since been moved, renovated and moved to the town's historical district next to the Metro Rail Station. Now painted a cheery blue, the former Mike Myers house is a chiropractic office. Black Hills Forest, The Blair Witch Project. Heather Donahue, Michael C. Williams, and Joshua Leonard ventured into the Black Hills Forest and bad things happened. The horrors they encountered were mem memorialized on left behind video in The Blair Witch. The usually popular indie that popularized the found footage genre. Although set in Burkittsville, Maryland, much of the movie was shot about 30 miles away in Seneca Creek Park, where fans can still find the movies Coffin Rock and Shack, though the Rustin Parr house was torn down, leaving only the foundation. While the film's trio had no day in the park, regular visitors to this area along the Potomac River enjoy fishing, boating, hiking horseback, riding, and biking. True horror stories. The Exorcist of Emily Rose. On July 1st, 1976, Annalise Michael died in her home in Germany after enduring near starvation for almost a year. She also had an exorcism to purge her of demons causing her seizures. One of three movies based on the story, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, with Jennifer Carpenter as the doomed woman and Laura Linney as a priest's lawyer, delves into the clash between the law and religion, leaving more questions unanswered than the real case did. Annalise had epilepsy, 
misdiagnosed as the devil, and the priests were convicted of manslaughter. Winchester. Sarah Winchester's sprawling, convoluted, 160-room house with 10,000 windows, doors that open to walls, stairs that dead end into ceilings, and a seance room with one entrance and three exits has stood as a symbol of her obsession and perhaps crushing guilt over those killed by her late husband's rifles. Now the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California, and all its ghosts, serves as the setting for a big screen movie starring Helen Mirren as the gun heiress. People say she was crazy, Mirren told the San Jose Mercury News. I think she was troubled, and I think she was like an artist. The Girl Next Door A horrific story of a teenage girl who was blindfolded, gagged, stripped naked, and sexually assaulted by a family member caring for her, by a family caring for her, the girl next door draws its sadistic inspiration from the 19's murder, 1960s murder of 16-year-old Sylvia Likens. Sylvia was tortured by the Benisowski family who were watching her while her carnival worker parents were away for three months. A prosecutor described it as the most terrible crime ever committed in the state of Indiana. After being beaten, burned, cut, Scalded with water and denied food, Sylvia died on October 26, 1965, and the family members, along with two neighbor teens, were convicted of murder or manslaughter charges. Stanley Hotel The ghosts of the Stanley Hotel owe a debt of gratitude to Stephen King. By the 1970s, the stately Colorado resort, built in 1909, had fallen into disrepair and looked to be one bad summer season away from demolition. Then, in the fall of 1974, King and his wife checked in for a night in hopes that a change of scenery would shake him out of a bad case of writer's block. It did that and more. With the Stanley about to shut down for the winter, the Kings had the place almost to themselves. The creepy solitude of the old empty edifice with dark carls and flaking walls and all sorts of sounds that couldn't be explained inspired him to write The Shining, the monster bestseller made into the popular Jack Nicholson film, and the Stanley was saved. So too, apparently, were the spirits of Freeland O. Stanley and his wife Flora. In life, the tubercular Freeland had fled to the crisp and pure Rocky Mountain air for his health, and he built the lavish East Coast Hotel in the wilds of Estes Park with his Stanley Steamer automobile riches. In death, he was said to revisit his favorite spot in the hotel, the billiards room, while Floro could be heard late at night still tickling the ivories of the old Steinway. Often listed as one of the most haunted hotels in the world, this colonial revival marvel reportedly received visitors from beyond and almost from the moment it opened its doors. In 1911, a chambermaid carried a candle into a room where gas was leaking. The subsequent explosion injured but didn't kill her, yet for decades, room 217, the presidential suite, has been said to be haunted by a spirit who pesters sleeping guests. It also happens to be the same room where Stephen King spent the night. Ghosts of Broadway. Two famed portraits of a beautiful young woman hang inside the New Amsterdam Theater. As actors pass by, they'll blow a kiss and say, Welcome home, Olive. There was a time when Olive Thomas ranked among the bis biggest names in show business. She was so a showgirl with the Ziegfeld Follies, which called the New Amsterdam home and the mistress of Florence Ziegfeld. The first Var Vargas girl, Olive posed topless holding a rose in a painting that hung in Ziegfeld's office. In 1916, Olive left the Follies for the movies, playing the baby vamp and a string of hits for Selznick Pictures, then starred in The Flapper for Paramount in 1920. She also found love marrying Jack Pickford, the brother of silent movie star Mary Pickford. It all came crashing down one night in Paris. During an overseas second honeymoon, the couple spent the evening in ta on the town drinking before returning in the wee hours to the Hotel Ritz. Pickford fell asleep only to be awakened by Olive's cries of, Oh my God, from the bathroom. She had swallowed a powerful dose of bichloride of mercury. A panicked Pickford plied Olive with water and egg whites to induce vomiting, but she would die in the hospital. She was only 25. 
Depending on which story can be believed, Olive either mistook the French labeled blue bottle for a sleeping potion, or she tried to commit suicide. Some said she was despondent over her crumbling marriage, which left her with a venereal disease from her husband. The mercury was supposedly prescribed to Pickford for his syphilis. It was one of the first major scandals in Hollywood history, and it put Pickford on the defensive. She didn't want to die. She took the poison by mistake, he insisted in a Los Angeles Herald Examiner interview shortly afterward. We both loved each other since the day we married. Olive's tragic death served as the backstory of one of the greatest ongoing ghost tales of Broadway. Her spirit is said to have returned to the venue of her follies fame, the New Amsterdam Theater, wearing a beaded dress and a sash with Olive written on it. Some witnesses say she's still holding the blue bottle. Dana Amendola of the theatrical group for Disney, which now runs the theater located at 214 West 42nd Street, tells of ushers who have felt someone or something playfully touching their backs. When nobody's there and an audience member who asked for a booster seat for her child from a woman who had to have been Olive's ghost. We checked and none of the staff had done it. So you can take that how you like, but it was kind of freaky, Amendola told Playbill, offering a theory for Olive's frequent reappearances. I think she likes the attention. Well, that's all for today, kids. I will see you later. If I don't see you tomorrow, happy Halloween. Bye.